Well, I first want to thank Morris from Trinutra as well as Stuart from Barrington for the opportunity to talk about a product I've been excited about for at least two years, and that's Thymoquin. And hopefully after the next 20 minutes, if you're not excited already about the product, hopefully you'll see why we consider Thymoquin the gold standard of black seed oil. Uh, black seed is also known as Nigella sativa as well as black cumin. Since we only have 20 minutes, uh, I want to follow an outline today. We'll take a brief look at the history behind black seed oil. We'll take a look at what is thymoquin, as well as why thymoquin, um, because composition matters and also bioavailability. Then we'll take a look at the clinical data behind thymoquin. And then lastly, we'll look at some of the product development aspects of thymoquin. So first, the history behind black seed oil. It goes back over 3,000 years where it's been used as a spice, as well as used traditionally for a variety of disorders. Um, it goes back to even 1300 BC, was found in King Tut's tomb, and was also used by Nefertiti, as well as Cleopatra for maintaining their beauty. It's also referred to in the Bible as black cumin in Isaiah 28. And that was written in approximately 700 BC. And in Islam, there's a belief that the spice can prevent or cure any malady or disorder except for death. <laughs> so you can see that um, there's a big belief behind this product that's been used traditionally to treat a variety of disorders, uh, including respiratory problems such as asthma, bronchitis, different types of pain, different types of GI issues, um, as well as hypertension and even fatigue. Even some of the scientific articles that have come out, like some of these review articles, have even included in their title, Panacea Seed, Nigella. Nigella Sativa, a miracle herb. So you can see that even in the scientific realm, they've even given a certain bit of notoriety to this herb. Currently, there's over 2,000 scientific articles that have been published since 1965. Most of those have been actually published since 2000. In 2000, there was less than 25 uh, articles being published in the scientific journals annually. Now, it's over 250, so a tenfold increase. Because of all that research, there is a very good understanding as to how black seed oil can benefit the human body. And we're not going to go into detail about any of this. We don't have time to go into it, but it's there for you to take a look at. But all these benefits on the outside in this figure basically are because of four primary functions. And those primary functions of black seed oil are its function as an antioxidant, a potent anti-inflammatory, and it is an immune modulator, and apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And then if you look all the way around, you can see pretty much every one of the 10 systems in the human body are benefited by black seed oil. And I'm going to add one additional function here, which is its anti-aging. And if you take a look, AMPK, most of you are probably familiar with, this is that molecule that we want to increase in the human body to stimulate regeneration, DNA repair. It's what it gets increased in fasting and intermittent fasting and exercise. So that's one. Also increases CERT1, or the sirtuins, which we're all familiar with, one of the first uh, mechanisms behind anti-aging. This was uh, discovered with respect to uh, the initial work on transesferitrol by Sinclair. But the other one is this PGC1-alpha, which is the master regulator for mitochondrial biogenesis, one of the key anti-aging mechanisms that people are approaching. So now we're on to what is thymoquin. Thymoquin is not an extract. It is the only standardized cold press full spectrum black seed oil currently available. It's standardized to 3% thymoquinone and less than 2% initially. Now it's down to 1.25% free fatty acids. You'll see how important that is. Compare that to other oils that typically have less than 1% thymoquinone and very importantly, 7 to 50% free fatty acids and that plays a big role. Composition matters, and we'll look at some specifics as to just how it works. But Morris at Trinutra was able to increase through non-GMO strain optimization process the thymoquinone content 
uh, naturally three to four fold. It's also the only BSO that meets USP monograph. It's patented. You can see the two deal with the Nigel, Nigel Sativa composition. Then this next one talks about the composition comprising thymoquinone and omega-3 fatty acids. So if you're looking for a way to differentiate your, uh, your omega-3 fatty acid product, great combinations with thymoquinone because then you have a patented product and then you also, as we'll show a little bit later, a synergistic product as well. And this last one is method for treatment of microbial overgrowth, imbalance, and infections. Thymoquinone, excuse me, thymoquin is also highly bioavailable. It's also been shown to be synergistic with omega-3, vitamin D, astaxanthin, lutein, beta-carotene, and even CBD. It's also been shown to be clinically effective per two clinical trials, which we'll look at in just a few minutes. Now, why thymoquin? It's very unique in its composition. In this case, composition matters very much. We want high amount of thymoquinone, TQ, and low amount of free fatty acids. Here you can take a look on the left, thymoquin, which is the 3% TQ. At that time, it was 1.8% free fatty acids. As I mentioned, it's lower than that now. The bar, the higher the bar, the greater the anti-inflammatory effects. You can see that thymoquin has a 10 times greater bioactivity compared to the same a product that has the same amount of thymoquinone, but a high amount of free fatty acid. And that free fatty acid is directly proportional. The more free fatty acid you have, the greater the reduction, in this case, in its anti-inflammatory effects. That's why composition matters. This next slide looks at its antifungal effect. Uh, M. furfur over there on the left is a skin bacteria that can cause a variety of skin disorders. Again, the higher the bar, the greater the anti-inflammatory activity. You can see here, thymoquin right here, high TQ, low free fatty acid, high activity. If you take a look at on the left here, you have low TQ and low free fatty acid, low activity. Take a look here, high TQ, but also high free fatty acid, low activity. So both are needed, and that's why the composition does matter. Not only with respect to just composition matters and bioactivity, but there also is the consistency of that composition. That's why the standardization is so important, because con consistent composition gives consistent results. Here's more visual. This looks at lipid droplets. This is where vitamin D was given. You can see smaller lipid droplets. Then thymoquin was added alone. Smaller droplets, when they combine together, synergistic, even greater reduction in lipid droplets. And here, taking a commercial black seed oil with high free fatty acid levels, not only did it not work, but it actually increased the size of the lipid droplets, again showing composition matters. The synergistic effects of thymoquinone has been shown with a variety of actives. When it's combined with astaxanthin, there's a two times greater activity in anti-inflammatory effects with pycnogenol 2.1, with lutein 3.3, with beta carotene 5.2, with vitamin D six times greater bioactivity, and then with CBD and hemp oil 7.7 .7 times greater anti-inflammatory activity when just adding a little bit of thymoquinone, excuse me, thymoquin. Here's an in vivo study where they looked at the addition of thymoquin and omega-3s. As you can see, when the animals are lean, they have a high amount of UCP. UCP1 is one of those enzymes that gets rid of excess calories as heat. So we want a lot around. That's why the lean mice have a lot of it around. That's what helps them maintain their leanness. When these mice were fed a high fat diet, they lost almost their ability to express this, this gene. When they added thymoquin, there was a significant increase which was greater than the addition of omega-3, but when they combined them together, you not only get a synergistic effect, but it actually was normalized, despite having ingested a high-fat diet. Very fascinating results. As mentioned, bioavailability is important. The bioavailability of thymoquinone is limited, and Trinutra has discovered a method to enhance both the bioavailability and the stability of thymoquin. As you can see here, um, by the orange line, the thymoquin, with just a small amount of a sunflower lecithin-based complex, was able to increase the bioavailability significantly. So we turn our attention now to the clinical efficacy. This was the study that actually got me really excited about 
thymoquin. And it was an open label crossover study utilizing 20 healthy prehypertensive individuals, average age 55, and it included individuals who are lean, overweight, and obese. Uh, the dose was just one 500 milligram thymoquin soft gel a day uh, on an empty stomach um, in the morning. And the study was published in Food Science, Nutrition, and Research. So the overall results, 16 and 11 point drop in systolic and diastolic blood pressure. Very impressive results. We'll put those into perspective in just a little bit. But they started out at 143.5. Systolic blood pressure, we're down to 127.3. So I think we're all familiar with 120 over 80 kind of being ideal. Actually, 115 over 75 is even more ideal. But you can see they were approaching that 120. Very significant results. If we take a look at diastolic, they went from that over 90, which is what you want to bring down, down to actually below 80. So they hit that lower diastolic number um, as a goal. So one of the things that people ask when it comes to a product is, how long do I have to take the product before it works? In just two days, there was 11 and 9 point drop in systolic and diastolic blood pressure. That is amazing, not only in and of itself, but also because there were no adverse side effects. Usually when blood pressure changes a lot, there can be side effects, and that's one of the problems with some of the current anti-hypertensive uh, drugs. In this case, there were no adverse side effects at all, um, and as you can see, 75% of the reduction in elevated blood pressure occurred within just the first two days. Another question that people often ask is, what's the chance that I'm going to respond to this product? Positive response rate was 74%. So 74% of all the people who took the product for six weeks did experience a significant reduction in elevated blood pressure. And if we look at just those individuals, it makes sense. They're going to have a greater response than the diluted uh, overall, which would include the non-responding or the 26% who are non-responders. And in this case, 23 and 16 point drop. Very impressive results. When they divided the 10 people in the lowest uh, baseline levels versus the 10 who had the highest, you can see it was also uh, related. Those who had the highest baseline blood pressure levels actually experienced the greatest reduction, which is exactly what you want. You don't want to force blood pressure to go down below normal. So the higher the initial, the greater the benefit. Now, how do these results compare to the current antihypertensive drugs? And obviously, this is not an FDA-approved claim that you can go out and make, but just to put into perspective how impressive these results are. So a recent review showed that with respect to the current drugs, reducing diastolic blood pressure, they reduce diastolic blood pressure 8 and 10 points. With respect to systolic blood pressure, they reduce it between 10 and 15. So you can see the results here are as good, if not better, than anything that's currently in the marketplace from a drug standpoint. And not only that, but you also have to add to the fact that in many cases, people have to take sometimes two, even up to five current antihypertensive drugs in order to be able to control their blood pressure. And even with that, 50% of the people who have elevated blood pressure are, have blood pressure that's not being controlled. So, uh, this is a very important benefit and then why this product is such a great product in my mind because if you take a look at the number one cause of morbidity and mortality in the world, you want to know where it is? Elevated blood pressure. So this is a very important study and what got me really excited about it. Here's six different mechanisms. I know we don't have time to go through that, but that's available for you if you want to take a look at some of the specific mechanisms by which black seed oil can reduce elevated blood pressure. Now we move to the second oral study, which looked at athletes. This was a double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized trial utilizing 37 healthy runners who were training for either a marathon or a half marathon. They had the exact same dose, 500 milligrams, once a day, uh, fasting, first thing in the morning. They were given it for four weeks, three weeks before a marathon and a half marathon, um, and then one week after. And this is a very well-defined mo model for stress because they're volu basically volunteering their body to stress themselves for this race. And it's a known risk factor that when they go through this kind of intensity training, there's an increased risk for upper respiratory tract infections. 
and so that's what this study that was published in Food Science and Nutrition and Research in 2022 was looking at. That was the primary um, outcome. And as you can see, there was a 62% reduction, which was significant compared to placebo with respect to reducing upper respiratory tract complaints. One of the mechanisms might be because of this 44% this reduction in plasma cortisol levels, or the primary stress hormone in our body. Um, there was 11% improvement in this case. The lower the score, the greater the increase in uh, mood that was found in those individuals who were taking thymoquin versus uh, placebo, which you can see there was no change. And then very interestingly, next slide please, it had an effect on the microbiome. When thymoquin was given for four weeks, they found that there was this 8% significant increase in microbiome composite score as well as a 66% increase in Streptococcus thermophilus, which is one of the primary bacteria that is used to make uh, yogurt, so a probiotic in this case. We move from the oral studies to the topical, and there are two studies here that we're going to take a quick look at. Um, the product is not, for a topical application, is known as Beautyquin, not Thymoquin. And what they found was with a 5% Beautyquin scalp serum, it was a 59% reduction in erythema or redness, 30% reduction in scaling, 70, excuse me, 17% reduction in oiliness, and 60% of the subjects saw an improvement either immediately or within two weeks time period. Uh, when we look at the positive response rate in this study, it was 60% of the individuals did feel a relief in itch, scaling, dandruff, and or soothing in the scalp or hair. Next uh, slide, or to the right of us, is the uh, anti-aging aspects of Beautyquin. In this case, a 3% Beautyquin facial cream improved at least four parameters of skin aging, and each of these were significant compared to placebo. There was a significant increase in skin hydration, skin luminosity, skin firmness, and skin elasticity. So as we talked about composition matters, here is Thymoquin on the left, compared to 15 products in the marketplace. Looking first at that less than 2% free fatty acids, and we look at Thymoquin, it actually is the only one that meets that criteria. None of the other 15 products do, and you can see 8.3% here, 15.5%, 19.3% there. Um, very high free fatty acid levels, and as you can see from before, the look that we, uh, took when we looked at the uh, in vitro data, you could see that the higher that free fatty acid levels, the greater the reduction in its bioactivity. If we take a look at the next criteria, which is the 3% thymoquinone, you can see thymoquin meets it, but only one other product does, and this one here has a very high level. Now what's interesting, you have a very high level, which would demonstrate that it's an extract, but naturally when you do an extract, of black seed oil, you also increase the amount of free fatty acid as well. So that can be problematic. So this shows that Thymoquin is very unique amongst all the other black seed oils that are in the marketplace. Product development, clinical dose, 500 milligrams, is actually very easy to add, just one soft gel a day. Standardization, which we've talked about, and we just showed how different it is from all the other products that are out there. Fully traceable and fully sustainable. It is grown and processed all in the same location. Um, it's the only BSO that meets, one minute, perfect. Only BSO that meets uh, USP monograph. It's self-affirmed grass. And it also just recently got a license from Canada. More so. Yeah, there is a seven functional claim supporting liver health. Support immune systems, support microbiome. Uh, cardiovascular health and stress. Ah, excellent. And that's not in here, um, and so we want to include that. Supplier, Trinutra, Morris at, uh, at the helm there. It's a low cost of goods uh, for clinical dose, quick to market if somebody is looking to get it into the marketplace. There's finished soft gels that are available, and there also is a co-branding program that's available as well, and if you're interested, you know, talk to uh, your sales rep at Barrington or Morris at Trinutra. And there's an organic option. And an organic option. There you go. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you for your time. Perfect.